All right, Madam Clerk, we all ready on your end? Yep. Recording, Stan, we're good? Okay. All right, welcome everyone. This is, uh, we're in the City Council Chambers. Today is Tuesday, May 17th, and we have a study session on the Warren Valley Golf Course. Before we start, uh, for those that are not familiar with why we are here, uh, this is specifically in regards to our resolution. I'm going to give uh, Council Member Tom Wenzel, who had originally brought the resolution forward, an opportunity to give at least an abbreviation to the, those members in the audience as far as uh, thought process, direction, et cetera, et cetera. And then we'll go ahead and go from there into discussing the resolution that's been put together by, and we will not be, by the way, to make it clear, we will not be voting on it today. We are just having a discussion today. Um, for the resolution that was put together by our corporation councilor, Gary Miatki. So, council, council, there you are. Councilman Tom Wenzel, can you please give us an abbreviation? Okay, thank you, Council Chair. Um, I didn't just come up with this idea this, this uh, couple months or this year. Uh, ever since I've been on city council, I've asked uh, for uh, some kind of documentation on uh, uh, restrictions <coughs> on development of the golf course, which we were told originally when we purchased the golf course that there, there would be no development. But every time I asked about it, you know, dozens of times, um, no, no one produced anything in a contract, which, you know, maybe there wasn't something in there. And I was told by some of the council members that anything that has to be, that wants to be done on the golf course would have to be voted on by city council. So I got thinking, I said, well, you know, why should seven people, not even seven, four people have the power to uh, dictate what happens to this golf course Instead, I, I think it should be the residents to decide what happens to this golf course. And I found out uh, through my talking and my research that the only way that could happen is if it was put in the charter. And uh, to put it in the charter, there had to be a resolution drawn up. And since I originally uh, introduced my resolution and uh, Corporation Council drafted this, I wanted to make an amendment to this resolution to stipulate that um, this language, which prohibits development of the golf course north of the clubhouse or north of the banquet facilities, which means the banquet facilities could be improved on, uh, some other structures as far as uh, gazebos or uh, uh, outdoor entertainment area in the parking lot area, that'd be, that would be permitted. Um, but I want a, uh, more language added that a deed restriction be put on this in the event that the property is sold, uh, that this, um, this, this uh, ban on, sorry to say, ban on development would carry on the property regardless if the city sold it or not. And this was brought to my attention by uh, Corporation Council when I originally amended this. And he said, well, you know, he, at, at the meeting, he said, that would be no good after it's sold. So I want the language to be put in there that there'd be a deed restriction on this property, which would uh, carry this, uh, this development, uh, pro pro prohibition on development of the, pro of the property. Thank okay. you. Council Chair. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman B. Duda has to speak yes. first. Go ahead. Multi-billionaire also comes in and says, I want to build a, uh, a not an amusement park, but, water park. but a water park, you know, with a pool and a slide and this, and so it's more recreational for families to come in. Is that going to be permitted uh, from being able to happen? And my first question is, um, let's just say we want to expand on the clubhouse, and we want an indoor pool inside with, with a bigger banquet, uh, with, with expanding, you know, to be able to accommodate for bigger weddings. Is that going to be restricted from happening? Mm -hmm. And so I just have a, a you know a, a, a bunch of questions um, on that. I am also for uh, I'm against building homes a thousand percent. I 
Let's just say down the street, we wanted to move downtown. Uh, we wanted to make City Hall at, at Ward Valley, right alongside that building, and it becomes a centralized location. Uh, I know that I've had conversations with the fire department that have told me it would actually be an easier response to be able to get across most of the north end of the city of <coughs> if there was a potential the fire department would say. I mean, and these are just, so I don't want to restrict <coughs> what could potentially happen in the near future. I am okay. completely against building on the golf course. I want it to stay a golf course 1,000%. Put it on the record, take it to the, you know, record this and, and put it out on, on Facebook if you want. We are recording it. Um, <laughs> So we already are well, okay, I can my, answer. I can answer your all your questions. Where do we tell each other that yeah. this? You know, we don't know what the future is to hold. Nobody knows what this future is to hold and, and what's to come. I want. It's been a hundred years. It's been a golf course. Let's keep the golf course. It's going to stay a golf course. We don't know if it, you know down the line this could be a prominent golf course for the city where you're now building uh, um, a, a hotel. And I, I go to Traverse City every year with a bunch of my friends to go golf, which I'm not a great golfer. We stay at a hotel, we golf at the golf course, and then we go back to the hotel. It's in Traverse City, it's right on the water. I mean, unfortunately, Beaver Hunts is just surrounded by water, but imagine we become that centralized location. Only when it rains. Say, yeah. I want to come here. Oh, I want to golf, and I want to see the hotel. What if our Twitter moves are having, you know, uh, tournaments and, and more leagues that want to come out there now, now they're able to use the amenities like, like a hotel? Uh, or what if City Hall becomes there? So we really need to... Be very cautious. And I'm all for putting something on the ballot that says, but I want to make sure that if Corporation <coughs> Council is going to draft something, that we have to keep in mind that we are not going to uh, exile all of our solutions. That is my only concern on that, Council, uh, Mr. Councilman Wenzel. Uh, but I stand with you on making sure that they're not building homes or getting rid of the golf course. But <coughs> if we want to put something that says, here's a resolution, this could, it always has to be a golf course, but if we want to build more amenities to be on here, or if we want to Maybe somebody wants to, there's a bike trail that wants to go around the, the golf course. Let it, let's make it more operable for our residents. Okay. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Muscat. You know, Can when I we... answer questions? He asked me three questions. Go ahead, sir. All right, go ahead. Okay. Um, I can answer all three with two answers. Um, number one, this is only north of the, of, the, of the clubhouse. Okay. Anything north of the clubhouse with the matter... With, respect it's, it's only like 20 feet to this big drop off and then the golf course so the golf the, the banquet facilities could be approved you could put a swimming pool in there if you want you can oh, oh I'm just, I'm well, okay okay let me know well, let 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 me, me, let me, okay that's my answer for the, the one the second answer and this is the reason I'm doing it is to let the residents decide this could be put on we could say no development anywhere and this November, the residents vote on it, and they say, okay, no development. But then a multi-billionaire comes in and says, hey, I want to give the city a billion dollars, and then it goes back to the residents. Let them decide. Because there's seven of us that sit up here, and it only takes four to decide with the, what uh, 62,000 people. So if we're letting four people decide this. A couple of my real estate people, I'm not saying that they would do it or not, but, you know, that, that's their business. But, Councilman, uh, why are you always coming after realtors? I'm just saying, realtors? though. That's, I'm just saying. No, realtors are who I'm, buy and sell I'm, houses I'm for you. I'm just joking I mean, I've let it go it. too many times, but honestly, ever protect my industry. It's a very respected <laughs> industry. Stop. I'm just saying it's possible. All you need is four votes out of seven to, rep to say something for 62,000 people. Right? But that's called let's, everything let's we let this, Let's let the people decide. That, that's my final answer. Let no the problem. people decide. Okay, thank you. Council Chair. Councilman Muscat is next. Yes. Council. Wait, I, hold on one second. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just want to put this in the context, though. <laughs> the language that we have here does not necessarily reflect whatever it is that Councilman Wenzel is going to say or what he wants. The language I put together was bare bones language based on what I knew at the time that I was drafting this based on the motion that I received from the city clerk's office. So if, if Councilman Wenzel ends up saying, well, it's going to do this, but it's going to do this, then just everyone needs to recognize this language is all going to have to end up being gone over and changed and is going to end up having to reflect these different things. This language in and of itself, you know, just saying development. Development's a pretty broad, very broad, very broad very term, vague. right? And it's very vague in this context. So that's what I wanted to say before everyone starts talking about it, just to put it in the context. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Council Chair. Um, and thank you, uh, Mr. Miyake and Councilman uh, Wenzel. 
But when we first purchased this um, back, I, I forget what year it was, but myself and Robert Constant, uh, Dave Abdella, uh, Lisa Hicks Clayton, to, uh, Tom Barry, um, I believe um, Kaczynski. Uh, Joe Kaczynski and Marge Horvath was, were the council people. And it was Lisa Hicks Clayton, our treasurer at the time, councilwoman, brought up that we wanted to make put a deed restriction on the property. And I, I truly believe the former administration really didn't want to do anything like that, and we kept passing a buck. And I, I believe a deed restriction would help us more than putting something in the charter uh, even though that's not a bad idea either, but uh, having you know, and I and I was thinking about this today. Development is a broad term. For instance, we may have someone who wants to say, uh, you know, the golf course is flooding so bad we're getting more and more rain now than ever before. Say we want to convert part of the the golf course into a theme park, or. Uh, some sort of other recreation area and still keep the unflooded 18 hole course available for golfing. Uh, so I think development is a not a very good word uh, to put in because development is, hey, you could develop a better golf course. Uh, I, but uh, I, I understand where the, what, what's, what's, what's coming from here is we don't want those uh, a community built there, uh, and and as far as having a hotel built there, uh, that's going to be highly unlikely. But there's room in front of the clubhouse for something like that, maybe. But the fact of the matter is, I think a deed restriction would be a lot easier than doing this and making sure it stays a golf course through a deed restriction or go back to nature as it would go, uh, would be better off. Now, if I'm speaking, uh, if I'm not saying this right, a corporation council can chime in, because uh, I believe maybe a deed restriction would be something that would be better than, than something like this. If you were selling it, but while you're keeping <laughs> yeah, it. But, yeah, but if we, are, if, again, like Councilman Wenzel said, you've got seven people up here that can say, four of them just say, okay, we're going to sell it. Okay, and that's a good possibility because at the first, at first, we were all, all agreeing on houses being built there until the late Marge Horvath started saying, "Wait a minute, that's a floodplain," and it brought up a brand new series of thinking, and we started holding meetings on it. And Councilwoman, God rest her soul, Marge Horvath was absolutely 100% correct. Not only will those houses have a possibility of flooding, is the adjacent neighborhoods would be saturated with water also. So I understand the councilman's concerns, and I would not want to see that happen at all. But, you know, 5, 10, 15 years from now, none of us may be sitting up here, and you're going to have a whole brand new administration and a crew that says, well, you know what? We don't need this golf course no more. Some guy's offering us... Uh, uh, Hundred million dollars for this property. Let's sell it. So we're right back in, right back at square one again. So if I'm incorrect about saying about a deed restriction, I'd like to, our our legal mind to let us know. Well, you could do something along the lines of a deed restriction. The difficulty is one: who would be able to enforce it? And that's where you get into the idea of a conservation easement with some private party to do that. But the difficulty with the deed restriction, and I have not been a fan of this concept, is if the community ends up evolving, and let's say, for example, we probably have all recognized that bowling as a sport has declined very considerably, right? What if that same sort of thing That's happens? That's because I quit bowling, by the way. Oh. <laughs> But, you know, but, but golf could potentially go the same sort of way. Well, then you have a deed restriction saying you have to have a golf course on this property when you could end up actually using it for 
perhaps some other public purposes. And that's one of the problems with the whole development angle on it. That essentially, in, in, in essence, you might sit there and say, yeah, maybe we would want to end up using more of it north of the clubhouse to end up putting in a new city hall and a new fire station. Uh, for example, but getting back to your original point in terms of just the mechanics of it, yes, you could end up doing a deed restriction, a conservation easement. You would probably need to have someone who would be able to enforce that, but then after you have that, how are you going to potentially end up releasing that if it ends up being there and then there's no democratic control. In other words, uh, once you put it in place, then this, this other party is going to end up enforcing the restriction and the residents of the city may overwhelmingly say, look, we want the property to be used for X and their vote isn't going to matter one way or the other because at that point you so, put in something so, you can't get rid of. So either way we go deed restriction or like or this is not going not to help us unless we put in something specific like no uh, urban housing or things of that nature can be put on that property. Right. You could you could be more specific. I mean, this is really Because I think that's what we're looking for is to stop building <clears throat> homes and communities on that golf course. That's, I'm just going to say it right here. That, I believe, is what we're all, or the, as council chair says, the elephant in the room. Nobody wants houses built there, period. You could incorporate that language into something and let it be done at that, okay? Because basically, I believe that's what it is. And, and even with all the rumors going around, yeah, we want to sell it, we're going to build houses, and which is a bunch of baloney at this point in time, okay? I mean baloney, and a rotten baloney at, at best. Okay. So, Go ahead, Councilor. Well, then, then I, would, I would look at it based on what your comments were, Councilman. Uh, there would be two types of things that could be done, and they could be done as a charter amendment because then it would have to go to the voters to end up making the decision. One of them would be not to allow the property to end up being sold without a vote by the voters allowing for the sale to end up taking place. And, 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 and to be frank, that's always been, you know, just this language, I sat here and said, there's a total end run with regard to this. You could have four people vote to just sell the property, and right. this would be meaningless. Um, the other thing is to end up refining and having a better notion of what is really being sought here. Because, you know, that was my question. Okay, well, what is it we're trying to, what is the harm that we are trying to prohibit? We're saying development, but that term is extraordinarily broad in this context, too vague and uh, too ambiguous to end up being as useful. If we sat here and said, we want to make sure that there's not going to be any residential, the property will not be used for residential or industrial or other things. It will end up being used for, let's say, more recreational. And then that would also be part of a charter amendment so that it could be revisited, but only if the people voted for that to end up taking, taking place. And then if there was some sort of big development proposal, then there would be a lot of public attention to it. So that would kind of be the protection against a, some sort of overreach or some potential improper actions done by some other uh, city council body in the future. For would, would that be what the, what the Corporation Council mentioned, Mr. Wenzel, Councilman Wenzel, would that be appropriate for you also? Well, you know, I, I realize that this right here is just a very rough draft. And, yeah, I, I and there's understand. no definitions. You know, we could figure out what the development the definition of development is, and uh, I mean, this this is a great first step. You know, hats off to you, Gary, for doing this. Thank you. Um, we could go over it, and, and everybody put their two cents in, like we should. But you know, bottom line, no matter what happens. I want the residents to vote on this. Well, this is, you know, I, this is what he was just I, I, saying. I know, but I'm saying, you were saying, you know, uh, you could do, if you do two two things, you said the deed restriction or this, we're, our hands are tied, but only with the deed restriction. Well, the, deed, the deed restriction is only for selling it. Yeah, for selling it. Yeah, exactly. The, 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 the issue with the deed restriction <laughs> is being able to reverse it. 
with a charter amendment, it can be reversed by a vote of the people. All right? So it, 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 it is, uh, and to my sensibilities, obviously, this is, is, is my sense is, is that, you know, it's a democracy. It should basically, if there's going to be a vote of the people, then that should end up taking precedence in this particular situation. That seems to me to be a good way to deal with Councilman Wenzel's concern about the, shall we just say, like rogue city council that gives way to special interest and just decides to, you know, sell the property to sell the property for a song or something along those lines. So you have that restriction, not as a deed restriction, but in the city charter, and then you have an additional restriction dealing with while the city owns the property, that the property could only end up being used for certain, certain purposes. Okay. So my vision for this place has always been is to continue to keep it as some sort of an entertainment venue for the city. If it happens to be in today's world golf, great. If it happens to be maybe a swimming pool, great. If that's yeah, what the residents want. Pool. If people, if they want to expand, not the whole thing, obviously. Okay, if they want to have soccer there, if any type of whatever is in the best interest of the residents, the, the administration, whoever is in place at the particular time that they bring something forward, the administration or the city council wants to bring forward, that's what it should be. If it happens to be baseball and that's what's in, great. If it happens to be some fancy new sport that just came out and all the residents want it, great. But to put any type of restriction on ourselves, hey, I want to make it clear, and by the way, I'm, I'm very transparent in what I say. I don't care. No housing is going to be built there. I have personally no plans. There's been no, I've said this at the last council meeting, no conversation with any council members, any sessions, any meetings, anything with the mayor, Anything with the residents, nothing's being built there. So let's get that out of the equation. But will something be done there either now or in the near future or even in the far future to improve the property as far as being an entertainment venue for residents? Yes, I'd be all for it. So if somebody brought something forward right now, like we were at Shenandoah, like I mentioned at the last meeting, and they had a gym, nice gym there. So if somebody came to me right now and said, hey, I'm going to invest in this thing and put in a gym for residents to be able to use. I'd be all for it. Why should it be only for golfers? If if resident, if I want to go work out, people want to go work out, great. If somebody says to me they're into bowling now, hypothetically, and obviously that's crazy there, but you know what I'm saying. Whatever particular entertainment venue that the residents want, I'd be all for it. We can't put restrictions on ourselves. I'm, I'm always going to be against that. As far as deed restrictions, you do that just to explain it in, the, in plain terms. I'm explaining to you in plain terms. If I owned a building that's a restaurant, and it's my restaurant, and I want to move out, let's say Burger King, for example, but they don't want McDonald's to move in there, they could sell that building and put a deed restriction that no restaurant is to be put in there by the next person that buys it. So Zohair so Abdelhat buys it. We, I could put a deed restriction on them if I own that building. They cannot open up a restaurant there because I don't want a McDonald's to open up there when Burger King moves out. That's when you put in deed restrictions. But you don't do it on yourself. I, I just can't comprehend that concept. As far as entertainment, absolutely. I'm always going to be for an entertainment, any type of entertainment venue that the residents see fit in the future. In addition to that, we got our city hall here. Beautiful, nice facilities here as far as the city council chambers. Let's call it the way it is. We don't have a decent roof on the property. Well, now something's been, you know, put on. But we didn't have a decent roof on the property. Everything throughout City Hall is very old. We all know we could talk about the elephant in the room again. We could all just be blind to this and think, okay, we keep the City Hall for another 20, 30, 40 years. But the reality is eventually something's got to be done here. And if that happens to be on a half acre, acre or two or three, I don't know. I mean, I'm just thinking out loud here. At one of those acres and we turn it into a one golf course, 18 holes, then that's something to be discussed. Now, in terms of, well, I want the residents to, to decide. Absolutely, I'm all for the residents deciding. But the residents decide when they vote for council members to make decisions. If every decision, because based on that theory, we can throw that on everything, let's make the residents decide. Then you wouldn't have council members any longer. Everything needs to be decided on, because if we're gonna go to this, <clears throat> why don't we go to the Berwyn Center? Let's, put a, let's put a restriction on that. No development on that. It, it's not fair to, uh, to compare a golf course to any of the decisions we make. 
golf course is the, the biggest investment the city's made in uh, probably its history. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. I might be speaking out of court. But, that, you know, uh, is, is my microphone on? Yeah. I mean, I'm There's saying, you know, build a theme park there or you know, a water park or, you know, a, a five hotels. But let the residents decide. I mean, that's but, all I'm saying. You can let's just say let's put this on the, uh, the charter amendment, and let the residents decide that for now, th this this year, it's going to stay a golf course. And maybe it's next year we go, hey, this guy's over here and he wants to build a you know uh, water you know give you know water park amusement park, pay the city a million dollars a year, and then go, okay voters you want that yeah but if they want it, they get it if they don't want it then it doesn't happen. All I'm saying is no, everybody's saying all these ideas, and you're losing the thing. Let the voters decide. Okay, but, 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 but see, that sounds like a beautiful PC thing, let the voters decide, like other people are against voters deciding. The voters decide by voting for people to get into office to make decisions. I'm not for building on there, but I'm all for any type of development that makes it accessible to a lot more residents that want different venues of entertainment. That's all I'm saying. And if it happens to be not that, it happens. We got a problem with the fire department. I mean, I op I'm not going to open it up about that, but we know that at one point or another, eventually another fire department needs to be built. And there was a study done by them, and they figured that the best spot by that particular company that did that study to be able to put the most centralized location for North Dublin Heights Fire Department was along Warren Avenue and I can't remember if it was Beach Taylor, if it was right. something else. Yeah. But that's also an option. Maybe City Hall, maybe a pool, maybe a kid's place, I don't know, escape, Co whatever. Council park. Chair, adult, you know, Council what? Chair, this, well, they said this, this, park. Scared me. this, um, this resolution uh, pertains to, you know, everything north of the clubhouse. And I think everything south of the clubhouse, there's got to be 10 acres, 20 acres there, probably more than that. Of parking. You know? <laughs> of parking, yeah. And if you've ever, if you've ever attended an event there, uh, a major event, uh, uh, they had, um, Warren Evans has, has a, golf out in every year and he had to cancel it this year but he's and that's the biggest event at, at, at Warren Valley and maybe half of the parking lots are filled you know so in the event you know we could use Riverside parking lot no. <laughs> but uh, so there, there's room there I mean you go up when I first introduced this a few years ago I had residents call me make because I said something well maybe we can just develop like little strip stores along Warren Somebody, oh no, we don't want anything. And I was, I was, I was beat down for any development. But that's possible. You know, you could. There's, there's a lot of room there. Just the room between the the parking lot and the street. There's a lot of room there. I mean, anyway. All I'm saying, Councilman, is that's why they elect people into office. Hopefully, they elect good people into office to make their decisions. That, that's all I'm saying. And if we're going to put any type of deed restriction, that would not be, I mean, the council can decide on that. I don't think, in my opinion, personal opinion, I don't think it's a smart Well, I'm, I'm, I'm open for different ideas. You know, a lot, of, a lot of things have been brought up tonight. Thing, I would, if it says specifically residential homes, I'm all for that. Not putting those on there. That's fine. But anything the, beyond that should not be in there. Well, not industrial. Yeah, of course. No food. Well, there's another thing, you know, and, and then what about, I mean, you're going to build a water park out there if is that, all I'm saying council chair is you know what build anything but let, just let the residents decide this, this you know they voted for us right seven of us four can make a decision for 62,000 I said that several times already and this is the biggest thing we got going there's nothing bigger it's it's the most land we own I don't know I yes yeah, it's bigger than the incident old incinerator I think the only incinerator is like 30 acres so anyway, it's the biggest piece of property we own. So I think it's fair to let the residents decide because their residents have been here a long time. And the average resident probably lives here longer than any city council member is on city council. So that, that trumps the, them voting for us, you know. But, yeah. Yep. So, you know, there's, the, I, I don't know, the, the, late, the late mayor, he probably was one of the longest running city council members. So, I mean, our lifespan here doesn't compare to the lifespan of a resident in Dearborn Heights. But even though they did vote for us, like you said, a couple years from now, none of us might not even be here. So, but the residents hopefully will. Okay. You know? Thank you. I agree with Any them. other council members? 
Councilman Call. Yeah, I appreciate Councilman Wenzel's idea, but you know, let's look at the historical what what we've gone through. <clears throat> Warren Valley said they're not going to operate it as a golf course. The city bought it to prevent development. <coughs> uh, we've now got with the operator that was there didn't have a good track history. It didn't wasn't wasn't doing anything. We've got a new operator there who's going to put some money into it, hopefully, and get things going. So there's no talk about it being developed. You might want to say no residential housing development or residential housing development or industrial. But um, I agree wholeheartedly with Councilman Abdullah. Um, we don't know what the future holds. We went through this years ago, the city did. There was a uh, drive-in theater on Ford Road Borman Foods actually filed a lawsuit and won. There was supposedly the owner of the theater was a friend of the one of the former mayors. Um, and we now have the Height Shopping Center, which is great for our tax base. Um, we have an anchor store there, Kroger's. I'm, I'm sure it's appreciated. So uh, uh, <clears throat> this is a pro this is a solution in search of a problem. There's no talk about a developer developing the, uh, putting residential homes on the golf course. It's built on a floodplain. It was at one time uh, uh, where the city of Detroit dumped trash. So we, we can look at this, but let's look first on getting it developed, getting it marketed, getting an operator in there, and getting <coughs> them booking uh, golf leagues and so forth going uh, before we spend too much time talking about this. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Fred. Councilman Fred. I, mean, I do see the concerns that Councilman Lucent has about the state, but at the same time, I'm, I agree with you and Councilman and Councilman. I mean, I don't see why we have to put restriction on ourselves. I mean, Mr. Vince, one time, he mentioned last year, he said, what if we got a grant from a low point and we can build a rec center, a civic center at our city? So, uh, I mean, if I, I am a real estate agent, against building homes <laughs> on the golf course. I cannot do any business with the city that we come for its interest. But if, if that's a concern, let's do something about, like uh, Councilman Muscat said, if that's a concern about building homes, let's do a big restriction about building homes. But let's leave, leave it open for the city. To Absolutely. Do whatever they can do. Okay. Anything above and beyond homes, I will vote against. I, I'm, I'm okay with no homes, but beyond that, or no industrial either. Uh, Councilman, uh, I just wanted to clarify that when you say deed restriction, are you referring to a deed restriction or are you referring to like a charter restriction? Charter, charter. charter restriction. Okay, thank you. Okay, hold on a quick sec. Mr. Deeb is on line. He's got a question. Mr. Deeb, go ahead. And for those in the audience, Ali Deeb is our city engineer. Go ahead, Ali. Thank you, Council Chair. I just wanted to remind the uh, Honorable Council, please keep in mind that we are, you just approved a, a citywide master plan. And Wait, as you, you got to talk much louder. We're having a problem with our I think, internet or something. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so can you hear me now? A little bit better. Little talk as loud as okay. possible. Okay, so uh, as, as the Council knows, you just approved the citywide master plan. And the master plan, one of our, our, our issues, I, I, I hate to see us put some limitations on our um, um, uh, possible uses of that facility. You know, we have uh, part of the uh, golf course is a floodplain. And we, with, with the uh, flood mitigation efforts that we're trying to undertake, uh, part of the solution lies in, in possible uses of, of the golf course, or at least parts of the golf course that are within the floodplain. The county is currently doing some mitigations on, on the uh, uh, golf course, on the flood uh, area. And then part of our options for citywide mitigation efforts, whatever that option might be, is, is going to be studied as part of the master plan. So placing any kind of restrictions on uses for, for that before we find out what our future plans are, is going to be counterproductive in my opinion. So, um, you know, while I have no issues with restriction or any kind of limitations on uses for that, it's going to be counterproductive <coughs> for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
I'm not talking to the microphone. No oh, microphone. Council, Council Chair, um, you know, I, I, I don't know if, if, if everything if I've been saying is getting lost. You know, you could you could do anything you want there, but let the voters decide. You could build a the whole thing a retention pond, stop all the flooding in a certain area. But let the you know everybody's you know saying, oh, let's not put restrictions because we it's possible to do this or it's possible that. Fine. If that's what the voters want, then then let's do it. But let the voters decide. That's get, that that let the voters decide is getting lost all around here. It's a, oh, we can't let the voters decide because we might have a different plan for it. You know, let the voters decide is completely lost in this whole room. Very few people are even. It's going like this. You know, and let the voters decide. Build a high rise. Build build a the whole retention pond. Let the voters decide. Gosh darn it! How many times I gotta say that? Exactly. Well, yeah. yeah. That's what we're doing. I thought this is not what we're doing. Oh, 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 my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I, I think, I think, I, I think, I think, Tom, Mr. Wenzel, come here. Wait, Tom, come Tom, back. Come back. You know, I think everybody has taken Mr. Wenzel's comments out of context here, okay? And, and, Tom. Tom. See, this is this is a problem. I, I I know what he what his desire is. Okay, his desire is to make sure that development on the golf course, like housing, industrial sites, doesn't happen. Plain and simple. That's that's basically what it is. And, and I I don't think that anybody's going to object on doing other things on, if necessary, on the golf course. I mean, I don't want to have uh, 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 something like, you know, Ferris wheels and a lot of noise. We're still in a, in a re residential area there. But I think the biggest thing here is housing and industrial sites. And basically, that's what it is, I, I, I truly believe. Okay, but... Uh, Council, if you don't mind, because Council may do it, they have to speak earlier. Go ahead. And, and I just want uh, Mr. Muscat, Mr. Tom Muscat, nobody's disagreeing here. No, I understand I think that. Everybody's yeah. agreeing with you on that. Yeah, I, I, but that's uh, what I'm saying. I think it is, it, it, what he's saying is taken, getting taken out of context, and he just wants the people to be able to have the final say on, hey, problem, the, the place is going to be sold, the guy promises this, we'll vote yes or no. That's all he's but saying. Council Chair, listen. That happens, and guess what? We'll bring it upon them. Right now, nothing has ever been discussed, at least by this body, from every single one of the, here, from the administration, <laughs> out to the council, have ever said. I'm not arguing with that point. Know, I'm just, I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying what he's really thinking in his mind, I, 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 and that's what, I, that's what I'm saying. And and there is no talk about development, and I know that. I, I see this stuff on Facebook, and it drives me crazy. When people are saying the mayor's cronies are doing this, hey, bring your cronies forward. Let me know who these cronies are. If if you give me some names, nobody wants to ever come forward and give me a name. Look, and also on Facebook, no I'm, I know, but see, city, no yeah. mayor in any city is ever favored on Facebook. I'm yeah, gonna tell you right now, if it's mayor. Uh, the late Mayor Paleco, if it's Mayor Gobezi. Mr. Wilde is on Facebook uh, Mayor, once in a while. Nobody is going but, to but, like you know, but the thing is, is that the elephant in the room is nobody wants development on the course as far as housing and industrial site. That, and nobody's talking about it. Okay, so the, I'll tell you, <clears throat> Councilor Miyatki was first and then the mayor. 
Okay. Uh, my suggestion at this point is if there is a consensus among your honorable body in terms of wanting some sort of restriction, then it's a question of what kind of restriction. There's been talk of deed restriction. There's been talk about a charter amendment. If you have a consensus that you don't want to do the deed restriction, then the question becomes, do you want a charter amendment? If you want a charter amendment, then do you want a charter amendment that prohibits both the sale of the property and certain forms of development? And my sense is, is that if you have more deliberation on this particular point, it's a little more focused on trying to define the issues where there would be a consensus, then I could put something together that would reflect my understanding of that consensus, and then we could come back. I don't know that this is all going to end up being done before the election in November, and I think it's an extremely important issue when you look at a charter amendment. It's like a constitutional amendment, but at the, at the city level. So, you know, it might require some more input and some more sense of, of, of things, but that would be my suggestion. People just say, look, are, are you in favor of some sort of restriction like Councilman Wenzel is suggesting? And if so, should it end up being a charter amendment? And if it's a charter amendment, should it prohibit both the sale of the, of the property and some sort of development? And then get the rest of your comments with respect to what your concerns are in terms of development, then I can put something together that reflects what my understanding is. I, you know, it's it's always difficult when you got seven different people coming up with different things. But if you do have some sort of consensus as far as that goes, again, you're not voting, but you know, informally a consensus. If you do, then I can end up trying to work, put something together that goes beyond, you know, this bare bones thing. And I appreciate Councilman Wenzel's uh, compliment on on putting it together. I think it's pretty good language, but. I really didn't have a sense of where everyone was with regard to this. So that's why it's bare bones. Yeah, it's, it's very light, obviously. Yeah, well, but that's, you know, otherwise I would be assuming that, for example, Councilwoman Breyer would be on board with the exact same thing that Councilman Wenzel would be on the same thing as Councilman Baydoon. And to be frank, it's very rare that we have that kind of, you know, unanimous way of looking at things with something this Thank you. Wait, the mayor was next, then Mr. Bidun. Go ahead, mayor. No, again, you know, everything does go in kind of circles and so what I like to see. You know, for any, anything that we have to do, obviously, you know, there, there's always public comments. There's always been anything on the agenda. There wasn't a case come in and there wasn't a concern. So, I mean, I, I was, I mean, I sat on the council. There wasn't a, been a concern to the council that this is a concern. So it's not like we're making any decision without Absolutely. I think there would be a lynching if we sold the property. <laughs> oh, yeah. Council Chair, I have a question for uh, maybe a corporation council. I know we've had this discussion and, you know, we've looked at different avenues. And my personal opinion would be, I know Dearborn just recently put together on the ballot to see if they could be adopted to charter commission. And if it was adopted by the pr primary election and it was approved, then by the general election, there was a bunch of individuals that put their names and to run for this charter commission. The charter commission now reviews the commission and they're readopting a completely new charter. Uh, I think the Dearborn Heights City Charter is extremely old and outdated. I think if there's a charter commission that's coming into play, something with some adoption and some legal terms about what's happening with the golf course can be adopted there. Why don't we look at avenues of maybe, I mean, I, I think in, in my personal opinion, our charters from, you know, with, with respect to Mr. Thompson's father, it's been here since the 60s. Uh, and we've never had a charter amendment. Why don't we put together uh, a on the ballot that, you know what, we're going to change this uh, uh, charter. Let the residents vote on it. If they vote yes, let's put a commission together to go out and change this charter. Great. Then you can have the individuals put their names in. Like what Dearborn recently just did in this past election. They have three years. And by the, by the fourth year, you will get this you know, new charter. The residents will go back and either adopt it or they'll deny it. Um, and you follow the current charter up until this is, you know, this process. I think Gilbert Heights needs to see that. Uh, and then we can also add those legal terms with whoever the city elects to be a part of this 
nine body or seven body to this charter commission. The neighboring cities are doing it. There's no reason why the city of Dearborn Heights can't do it. Can you, maybe you give me some guidance on how we as a body can figure this out because it definitely needs to happen. Well, in, in, in terms of this particular issue, then it's, it's not something that you actually have control over. Ends up going to a commission. The commission might sit there and say, "No, we don't. We don't care about Warren that's Valley, okay. or we want to end up doing whatever." So, but that's what that commission is going to be elected by the people to make those decisions. <coughs> okay. Well, but, 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 but now but, we're off but, to a whole different subject. I, I exactly. Where exactly. I'm going, exactly. Where I'm going with this is where, and, and I'm sorry. I know that we're talking about Warren Valley Golf Course on the study session. Where do we got to go on these next steps so that we can potentially have this on our ballot for, let's just say, this next election? Well, that's, that really wasn't what I was truly prepared to discuss. I think we went through that when we originally ended up having the, uh, the gentleman Artists from uh, from Dearborn, uh, Mr. Abdallah, uh, who ended up. Uh, and, and, know, I watched, and I watched it. I, I watched right. it. So um, you know, I think that that was kind of the background with respect to that, um, and you know, we could we could go forward with that type of process, but I don't know about the timelines and things like that without actually taking. Right, and I, at that time we talked about charter, charter amendments only. Yeah. Any other council members have? Council any? chair. Yes, council. Um, thank you. Um, you know, normally I don't, I don't let people upset me or things like it's that nature because uh, what people's opinion of me I don't care really care about, but uh, some kind of orchestrated attack on me was done tonight, and I'm tired of being belittled, and there's people that are trying to belittle me because I want to have the residents have a voice. And I'm not going to put up for that. I mean, I'm going to fight harder. You woke up a sleeping giant, and you're going to be sorry because I'm fighting harder. I'm going to be more vocal for the residents of Dearborn Heights. I had two fine residents come out when, as I walked out, urging me to come back in. I, I'm not putting up with this crap, you know. This is we're we're up here being professional. The last city council before this, uh, this before this last election, every member, the mayor was one of them. They wouldn't stand for people calling and belittling a council member, or a, a, a someone on this table belittling a council member, humiliating them, mocking them. I'm tired of this stuff. This shouldn't be. I mean, this you talk about unprofessional. This this is this is outrageous. But I'm going to be—I'm going to fight harder for the residents. I'm fighting harder for the union people. That's my opinion, and I'm—I'm I'm, I'm going to strive for it. And I need as many people up here to back me on this. If anyone up here is against what I'm saying, you're against the residents voting, and you could do anything, and the residents vote on it. They can change it next year. I mean, what—what what the heck is uh, people don't understand? What I was accused of having an agenda. I think you talk about someone having an agenda. I think people that are, are going against what I'm saying have the agenda. Thank you. See, Councilman, see, you say don't belittle. Nobody's belittling. Everybody's got a difference in opinion. Council but then when Chair, you're, I'm not going to go into it, but you know you, what I'm talking allowed about. Speak, allowed you to speak. No, I, yeah. But you, you called it belittling. I didn't say and, you belittled me. I'm sorry? I didn't say you belittled oh, me. Oh, okay. Be, because differences of opinion is not necessarily belittling. Okay. Yeah. So right now, like you just said right now, Everybody that is against this is 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 belittling me. No, no. I'm just saying. If I disagree, no, with that's you, not it at all. You're not listening. Okay, you're not listening. You okay, you and I. I'm not you talking about and you, Mo, you, you, or I know you or you. Anybody here can disagree, and it's okay. It's I know. okay. To disagree. Council, council chair, you, you're not. You know, but you, you don't said get if it. everybody disagrees with me, they're belittling you know, me. I'm not belittling. I didn't say everyone's belittling me. You said anybody that disagrees with this type of. You said everybody's belittling me. Nobody's belittled. I haven't belittled you. I haven't seen anybody here belittle you. Well, All they've done is disagreed. You weren't with listening. All your you weren't okay, listening too well. I'll have you clarify. No, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to give give that person the satisfaction or the dignity of, of being talked about. They know. Everyone here knows. Okay. Go ahead, Council. He said, if you, "If you don't agree with him, then you have an agenda." But this is this is something you're going after us with. Like, if I don't agree with you, then I have an agenda. Right, if you don't agree with me giving the residents a vote, that's all I'm saying. We so yeah, there it goes. I mean, nothing against you. All I'm saying, you know, how many times do I have to say it? I'm going to write a big sign. I'm, Let the residents decide. You know, what's wrong with that? You can say anything you want. We can, you can say 
like I say, build a casino out there at the residence site. And then you next year. Okay. You know, I mean. All right. Thank I'm you. not. I'm not giving up on it. I mean, I mean, to be humiliated up here by a caller, and then someone up here at this table. You know, I I don't def I don't like defending myself. I think when you defend yourself, you show you some sort of guilt. So I'm not going to defend myself anymore. I'm just going to prove myself. Okay. Thank you, Councilman. Any other comments from council members? Yes, Councilman. I'd like us to get back to the whole purpose of the original meeting. And Tom, no one wants to insult you. That's not the purpose. I personally don't like deed restrictions, having been a realtor myself, and it messes up a lot of things that you can't take back. I lean more toward the charter aspect that we discussed, and I, I think we do need to do work on our charter as well. So that's all I wanted to get across. Okay. Thank you, Councilwoman Breyer. Any other comments from council members? Okay. Next up, we're going to go ahead and go with public comments, but just, uh, I'm sorry, no, I'm going to go to Zoom first, of course. I'm going to make sure Leslie's happy. So we'll go ahead and go to people on Zoom. They have any questions, and then we'll go ahead and switch over to people here. Are we going two minutes? No, let's go with three minutes. This is an important subject. I'm sorry? MPS was lit up before. MPS, okay, so let's start with MPS. No, MPS was just a hand from the mouse. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. The mouse is Okay. So, yeah, gentleman Hussein, go ahead. Can you guys hear me this time? Yes, we yeah. can. I'm going to make all of you guys' life way easier and short. Stop guessing between each other. What is uh, Kassam and Munsa referring to? It seems like he got upset over my comment. And since he does not really care, I really don't give a damn either. I just put it out there. Councilman Winslow, I'm going to sit out there, hide your finger, claiming you're trying to work for the resident. The residents are in deep need for people who do work hard in the city. If we want to give raises for people who are working hard for the city, we got to look all over the city. Not just the union people who contributed to your property and your personal family house and went out there and helped you out. That's why we're going to keep on giving raises to the union. Okay. You really care about the city. Okay. Okay. Hussein. Okay. Okay, one second. It's my turn to talk. Okay. The audience don't hear fine. They don't want to hear it. They can, they can just plug their ears. The same way he got offended okay. from my comment. I believe I have the freedom of speech. I can say every single step of word that I can want to say. I know, but, but Hussein, you got to be careful with accusations here. So if you don't mind, please, let's just, let's just keep it, just keep it respectful. It's not accusation. Believe me, you know me very well. Every single word I say, I say it with facts and evidence. If he really cares about the golf course and the sake of the golf course and moving forward with the golf course, he wants to come put the restriction on it. What is he expecting people to do? You as you are known, one of the probably the best real estate agent in the state of Michigan, as we see on your boards, and you're a very smart guy. You tell me if we put the restriction on that golf course, would anybody? No, I, I would personally be against putting a deed restriction. Enough with the rumors. Enough with the baloney. If he wants to serve the the city and the resident. Fair, very easy. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hussein. Thank you. Anybody else on Zoom? Okay. Anybody? I don't see anybody. Do you see anybody? Okay. Any members of the audience? Yes. Please Come on up. Excuse me, Madam Treasurer, with your permission, please. Uh, may, I, may I just jump in real quickly? I didn't mean to ask a question. Yes, please. <clears throat> You know that I'm sitting here recording the meeting and I'm listening very carefully to what everyone says. I'm writing down who's saying what so I can go back afterwards and replay this. I would like to ask Mr. Winslow and Mr. Bozzi, did Mr. Bozzi's comments made immediately before you walked out, is that what caused you to walk out? That's what my opinion is. I think you guys sitting up there in the council thought that you all upset him, but 
I think, having listened very intently, I think your comments precipitated his walking out. Can you, can you? Sp That's correct. Okay, thank you. That's what I wanted to confirm, and I want you to hear what he is saying, because that's what I heard. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not taking sides, just what I heard. <laughs> Council Chair, please, I want to say some history happened behind this golf course, so if you give me just the time, because you are a part of it, and Ray Muscat is a part yeah. of it, too. So just to clarify, Mr. Abdelhaq, Normally it's two minutes, I gave an extra minute, so you'll have three minutes. Thank you. A while ago, Mr. Baidun, the owner of... Not me. <laughs> no, the owner, the gentleman who came to buy the golf course. Which is not me. I'm just put witnesses, Ray Muscat and... Kas Mr. Let's clarify, Kasim Baidun. <laughs> Kasim Baidun. Came to my office. He wants to buy the golf course to put luxury homes on it. And he said to me in my office that the mayor is on board, meaning Mayor Paletko. Then he asked me, because of my relation with some good relation with some council members, to convince two council members to write letters for him so the four people from the city council will vote to approve the sale and give him permits to build luxury homes on the golf course. Four city councils wrote the letters. I'm not going to name who they are. Ray and Dave, you know who they are. For full disclosure, it wasn't me. But go ahead. You were, uh, I'm going. No, I didn't write you, No, four people. I didn't know that it was a flood zone. I did arrange meeting with two council members and they wrote letters for this gentleman and he submitted to the city council and Mayor Paletko was on board. He was. Okay. What happened, God rest her soul, Marge Horvath brought three to five hundred people to the golf course banquet. She raised hell. Paletko was at side, close to election. He got scared and he backed out of the deal. They did not sell it to him, but they went and the four city council members retracted their letters. This is history our resident need to know. And if I am wrong, please, both of you tell me you're wrong. You're I don't remember not. if it was four, and I'm not saying you're wrong, but I remember no, no, some council members changed their minds. Four people, Correct. and I know who they are, and I'm not, you said yourself, and Ray retracted his letter to other people, uh, not, no longer on the council. So we bought the golf course, and we supposed to be according to the agreement and everything I heard from the mayor, from the council, from everybody in the city, that it's going to stay golf course. So Mr. Wenzel is not wrong. All it takes is four people to sell that golf course and to do whatever they want on it. Now, did the city council think about the parcel which the county owns in the back? They can build on it luxury homes, and it can cause a flood. Did, did the city think about buying it from the county so we protect our residents so they don't have a floods? The county had they excluded at the time. I understand. I understand. My understanding is... Wait, hold on. Let, let him, let him can I time. finish? Yes, sir. Please. Yes, go ahead. The possible resolution could be done simply by resolution that you put restriction on it. In another way, Tom, you don't have to have their votes or, you know, anything. You can go collect 1,500 signature for referendum to put this in front of the public. And I ask you, please, one last minute so I can say what I need. Well, I, I gave you extra. I'll give you 30 seconds, please. 30 seconds. Okay. You are the man I respect more than my father, probably. 
our charter calls anybody who doesn't provide for his kids, read that charter. It's a misdemeanor in our charter. This man is providing for five orphans. And you all know if you have kids how much it costs to raise orphans. And shame on anybody who accused this man that he, he's doing this and that because they contributed to his children. Shame on you, whoever you are. Okay. Council Chair. Thank you. Uh, I want to add something in regards to this purchase or sale or anything like that. Because based on this theory of you need the residents to decide, and I respect that, and I believe I, I vote and decide on behalf of the residents. That's why I was voted in. But based on that theory, then the residents should have decided before we bought it too. Because if you think about that, the ones that decided to buy it, and I was on council then, and I was all for it because I said we're buying 254 acres for 1.8 million. And it came out to sound like 7,000 something an acre, which was a steal. And, and I, I remember word for word me saying it's a steal of a steal of a steal. As a realtor, I knew it was a steal to buy it for 1.8 million. But let's just pretend that same thing in the reversal was on the charter back then. We couldn't have bought it until we put it out to the residents to vote. That could have been five, six, seven, eight months or nine months later. And let's just use hypothetical. Some billionaire comes out and says to the county, what are you guys, crazy to sell to them for 1.8 billion? Million, I'm sorry. I can tell you, I personally would have bought it for 1.8 million all day because that's for free. So what if somebody else came in and said, I'll buy it for 5 million. Now if we're going to wait for the residents to vote on it, we wouldn't have had the opportunity to be able to buy it because it has to go in for other residents to vote on, and the council members who were all in favor of purchasing it, and I was amongst them, wouldn't have had the opportunity, and we could have possibly lost it to some millionaire. In this particular case, the one that was going to build on it, you mentioned Mr. Abdelhaq, he could have just as easily, if it would have been put out for the voters to vote on, and let's just, just say hypothetical, that was in June or July, and the voters were going to vote on it in November, and him or anybody else, so I'm not bashing him, any other developer could have come forward and said, you know what, since it has to go to the voters to vote on in November, a county executive or county commission, instead of selling it to them for $1.8 I'll buy it for $5 million. And I can tell you right now, I can tell you as a realtor myself, all day, every day, that property can be sold for not two, not one point eight, not three, four, five. Keep going up, and we'd have to do an analysis. But we're probably talking about $20, 30 40 50 million for that property. So if we have to wait for the voters to decide if we could buy it for $1.8 if we go backtrack right now, go back two years, all day there will be investors that will buy it from under our hands for much more than $1.8 million. Keep that in mind. Council Chair. Yes, Councilman, go ahead. Well, number one, we can't go back. So let's take that. But I'm using it. I, I, I know that. But a hypothetical in this case doesn't work because we can't go back. All we can do is look to the future and look forward. And I do agree with Councilman Wenzel that we need to do something. What it is, I don't know exactly how to do it, but I know something needs to be done, okay? And, and Mr. Zohair abdel Haq was correct. I wrote a letter. I rescinded my letter, and I rescinded it because of Marge Horvat when she said, look it, it's a flood zone. Don't you? I said, you know what, Marge? I free, every time I, it rains, I drive by there, it is flooded. So what's going to happen? They're going to raise those houses up, and then the rest of the community is going to flood. She made sense. So that's when I decided I took my letter out, okay, because at least someone talked some sense into my head. And not only was that property going to be sold, I can guarantee you the property where the ice arena was there was works on that being sold too. So there was a lot of dealings that were going on that we didn't know about. And I asked the former mayor, are you sure only two people are bidding on that property? He said, yes, I said, there's not a third? He said, no, he said, well, there was a third. There was a third. And okay. that's why you're elected into office to I under, make those decisions. I understand and that. The decision was made but, to. But again, put but again. Elite sports. But there. again, I'm here today. I'm not going to be here. God knows I, I dropped dead tonight. I won't be here to vote on it tomorrow. Okay. No problem.
So <laughs> we need you for a while. So what I'm saying is in the 5, 10, 15 years from now, things may change. And we don't want to disturb the neighborhood of the way it is. I, uh -huh. I, and that's how I feel. Thank you. Before you speak, I'm asking the same thing I always ask people. Are you speaking as a resident or as a treasurer? In this case, I'm speaking as a resident. My name is Lisa Hicks Clayton. I live on Gully Road in Dearborn Heights. Um, I want to share, thank you, by the way, Mr. Abdelhawk. You stole a lot of what I was going to say, so that's perfect. <laughs> um, but I want to segue into it. I was a council member for nine years. <clears throat> I was president of Golf U Manor Civic Association for 10. And of course, I'm not president anymore. I don't live there. But I, I don't want to speak on their behalf. But I do want to share with you that there's a couple concerns here. And I think as a council body, you have to make a decision on what you're actually deciding, OK? And how are you going to get there, the best means? I agree with you, Councilman Wenzel, that you need civic engagement because that makes up good government, good governance. But what I want to remind you is the infrastructure, there's three interceptors there, I believe. Okay, we have to be concerned about the interceptors and failure of infrastructure because we already know in the state of Michigan, infrastructure is getting a D plus rating, a grade. Okay, the floodplain, yes, it's a floodplain. And I'm going to tell you, water always wins. Maybe we've realized that from Ecorse Creek, but water always wins. And stormwater management is a hot subject. Also, I want to remind you that historical preservation, that golf course designed so many years ago, was the first non-segregated golf course in the United States. So keep that in mind as well. You mentioned, Mr. Abdelhawk, about that meeting at Warren Valley Golf Course. That's on my list. Um, a lot of those residents were Golf U Manor residents that we send out lots of emails. And they came in force, over 500, to express their concerns. And the number one concern was protecting their homes more than anything else. So again, I think it's a reasonable request. Decide what you want, what's important, what to protect. Development's a big word. OK, but also include your residents. Maybe you want to survey them, do civic engagement, engage them, and that may help you reach whatever that decision is. But most of all, please listen to our constituents. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Council. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> all right, you got Secretary. You got two minutes. No, ma'am, you got three. I got 10. But please. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you are a lion. I am a resident. No, but just. As a resident or? I'm talking as a resident. Okay, go ahead. My name is Lynn Senya, Kennedy Street, Valley View Subdivision and Corporation Council. I just want to run the deed restrictions by you. As you know, some of you may have been on council, Councilman um, Constant, you were. Um, my subdivision was built in 1953. There was a deed restriction put on there that there were not to be two story homes put in subdivision. And guess what? They put them up there are. So I just want you to keep that in mind. When it come, and the only way that could have been resolved because the city had, had stood behind that deed restriction at one time, and then this time they didn't. Um, and so the only way that could have been fought is if the residents paid an attorney to fight that. So keep that in mind when you make that decision. I think this is a very, very important topic. I'm not going to get flooded. I'm way up on it. I, it, I don't have anything. No, I'm not. I, I'm I'm way up from the river. I'm on the other side of the of, of the of Beach Daily. Oh, I too. And I don't have a basement. Okay. <laughs> so your living room will get it. <laughs> well, that could happen. But anyway, as far as I'm not an attorney, but I can only tell you the history of the deed restriction on our whole subdivision. It didn't happen. It it was not unless you wanted to go, take it to court. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Yeah, our clerk Lynn Sonia is correct. And the person resident. that built the second floor, and then it went up before we had a chance to do anything. It was right down the street from then Council Chair Ken Barron. And, yeah. uh, but how many second floors are there now? In that Two. Building? Two. And the residents did all get together, but they weren't willing to. And, and, I, and I felt bad Take for the, I mean, it's ultimately up to the homeowner because that should have been caught during a title search. Um, and it wasn't, so they went ahead and did it. And, and cities, and, and title search is only done 
when a property is being transferred or refinanced. It's not done when somebody's building a home on it, especially oh, no, if they. Well, no, there was a home. No, I know, I know. I'm sorry, putting on an addition, I should say. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, Councilor, go ahead. Yeah, if I could just clarify a couple things. So I want to start with um, what the city clerk was just referring to. A particular situation came up uh, some time ago, and basically it came to me, and people were saying, well, we're going to try to enforce this deed restriction. I said the deed restriction is not something that is a city obligation. It is not a city requirement. It is a requirement within the between private parties. It would be like if we sat there and someone had a covenant not to compete after they ended up selling their uh, example I always used was florist business because Ken Barron <laughs> was, was a florist. So I would always say if you sold your flower shop, yes, if you had a covenant not to compete as part of that, and then you went over into Redford and started a business, someone could sue as a private individual with respect to that, but it wouldn't be up to the city to end up enforcing that kind of requirement. Moreover, it's a lot trickier than people seem to think when it comes to these deed restrictions because essentially they can end up losing the effect as they end up being blown off throughout a particular subdivision. In other words, they can no longer necessarily be as enforced, or a court might sit there and say, it's going on throughout the whole right. subdivision. No one's complained about it. Someone should have done so a long time ago. I'm not going to enforce it. So that's one issue. The other issue uh, Mr. Abdul Haq ended up raising with respect to the, and, and the city treasurer raised had to do with a little bit of the history. I believe Diane Webb, uh, deserves a great deal of credit because she is the one who orchestrated the, uh, the, uh, the town hall meeting with respect to this. I'm sure that yes, other people... Right. You're right. Yes, and, and basically, and this, uh, Mr. Abdul Haq is just kind of, at least my recollection to the degree I can end up getting into some of the issues, but my recollection is that it was a real eye-opener, especially when the mm -hmm. environmental types of people ended up coming forward for Mayor Poletko in terms of what the impacts could end up potentially end up being. And that's why I think for other people who were on the council, they also ended up revisiting that and not realizing what the potential environmental impact would be uh, to kind of put some of this into context. So hopefully that history helps. Thank you. Thank you. Just one more on that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, no, I forgot what I was going to say. No, the city had upheld that deed restriction before. That's the only thing that I wanted to say. Right. And they had, and, and I know that it was so. a private. I know that it's a private matter. I get it. The city did it, and that was the whole argument at the time. And then, okay. And, and we could have been sued for having done so. So okay, and I understand that. But my my um, issue is that you may have to sue somebody if they do that. Thank if you. if there's a deed. Council Chair? Yes, go ahead. Could I ask a question of Lynn? <laughs> Lynn? How, mu how much time do we need to have something put on the ballot? Aren't we running late for November already? Okay. We have to have it to the governor's office at least 60 days before. Okay. So it was August. So we'd have to do it by roughly next week or the week after. Right. By June 3rd. The proposed charter amendments or revisions after 4 o'clock on the 12th Thursday before the election, which is... Oh, that's three months. Which is August 2nd, I found my thing. Right. If I, if I may, that is basically just what the governor's office and the attorney general's office requires for their review. In other words, they tell you, like, if you're thinking you're going to get it on November and give it to them with the minimum amount of time, they're just not going to review it, and you're not going to have their approval before the, uh, before the November election. Okay. Thank you. Come on up.
Drepkowski, Columbia Street. How many minutes do I got, Bill? Dearborn Heights. <laughs> Dearborn Heights, Wayne Three County. Minutes. I'm going to give you two minutes and five seconds. Okay. Um, since we're talking about Warren Valley, let's bring up a subject here of where are we at on signing this contract? The contract for the concessions of Warren Valley. That Well, yeah, if I, if I may, um, Mr. Shank, who's the, uh, the attorney um, representing uh, Isa Brothers, and I have had discussions the last two days, and we've had discussions internally as well. Um, so that's, that's where we are, but our big problem is, you know, sometimes you don't know. It's, it's hard to commit to anything having to do, for example, with the management of the golf course if you don't know if those pumps, which are extraordinarily expensive equipment are going to be uh, uh, functioning or not, even if we take um, credit for them, it still has to do with when are you going to be able to roll out uh, things being done. So I, that's, that's one of those unknowns that's been um, a serious impediment. Have those pumps been checked? No, they're <coughs> But nobody, nobody's tried to bump start them and, and try to see if they. That's the big pump. Well, looking at that electrical panel, I can see why. Okay, but. I look for those that, that, that nomenclature, and there's nothing there unless there's something in the paperwork uh, that, that maybe came with the pumps. Uh, but I do believe somebody had done a study on, on what it costs for three new pumps, and uh, you know, uh, it was like twenty-five or $30,000 for those three pumps. Council Chair. Yeah. Okay. okay. Wait. Okay. One second. Okay. I, I have, I have, a, I have Wait, a comment I, after no, you. No, I'm allowed. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Were you all set as far as your question? No. He's only used 10 seconds. <laughs> well, it, it brings back to, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this contract was supposed to be signed by the end of April, according to the cities, according to the councils. Uh, uh, the 12th? April 12th, according to the council's decision to have it up and going. Now, since we're beyond April 12th, this has to go back out for rebid, according to what the council said. Correct no. me if I'm wrong, but if you want to go back and check your records. No, that's not what the, it, my recollection is, is that it was supposed to be brought back before you. And it, that never, doesn't and mean it was that never brought back. But it doesn't mean that it goes out for rebettery. If you go beyond your time, still negotiating. If you go beyond your time, they were, they were to bring where, in contract costs. But keep in mind, again, there was a lot of things. Once the it golf course matter, was opened, okay, you're I'm a sorry. business man. A contract's sir, a contract. Sir, one second. Okay. Once they came into the golf course, 
as you know and everybody knows, there was tons of things that were not even closely related to the way or the condition that the administration thought was in. Right. In addition to other things that I'm not getting into. It's like buying into, a property on site and on scene. I'll, I'll, just say, I'll just say other changes that happened when someone was there and left. I'll leave it at that. And you know what the changes were. Oh. I'm, I'm being very nice. But I can use words other than changes. Councilman, well, uh, let me just let Vince finish first. Were you all set, Vince? Or you well, have I just wanted a better understanding of this because as far as I recall, that the, the, the time had eliminated and the council wanted it done by a certain date. And if it wasn't done, then it was supposed to go back out for rebid. That's the way I, I understood it. Now, if you want to check into it, that's great. I'd, I'd have to look at I don't know off the top okay. of my head. Maybe I could look into it. I know the motion said that the contract was supposed to be turned into council. I think believe it was the next regular meeting. And that so meeting has gone awarded. and you never voted on it. In a, yes. So yeah. now it means that goes back out the bid. Okay. Bill's that? I'm but wait, hold off a sec. I think the Councilman Tom once I had a question for oh, you. Oh, yeah, no, not a, a question for but to piggyback what he what he's just saying there. It was the motion was voted on by city council to award the bid to the uh, ESA brothers. Right. And there's two, there's a couple stipulations, and one of them was that the admin administration and corporation council draft a con an agreement and present it to city council the first meeting in April, which was April 12th. And uh, that never happened, and unless you gave them an extension without council approval, there was never an extension asked. There was nothing... Uh, um, I, I gave you a copy of that motion a couple of weeks ago. I have it right yeah. Here. And but anyway, um, okay. I'm, I'm going to read it just so that at least uh, what do you call it? And I, and I hope. Yeah. All right. Motion by Councilman B. Doon, seconded by Councilman Wenzel, to award the bid to ESA Brothers LLC as concessionaire for the Warren Valley Golf Course, subject to. A, Corporation Council Miatki and Administration negotiating and preparing an appropriate agreement with ESA Brothers, LLC. B, the City Council approving the proposed agreement. Okay? Uh, in addition, Corporation Council Miatki and Administration are directed to negotiate and prepare the proposed agreement in time for it to be considered by the City Council at its regular first regular meeting in the April 2022 as outlined in item 7A. So with that, that doesn't mean that whoever it was given to is void, it doesn't mean it can go out, I'm sorry, it doesn't mean it automatically goes out for RFP. But, and unless we as a body decide to put it back out for our RFP. Now this is me reading it with my, I wouldn't use the words limited, but at least just based on my legalese or reading legalese in my business. But I'm not an attorney. Well, I'm going to hand it to you just so at least. No, no, what you've stated, I wrote it. <laughs> I, mean, you know, I mean, you know, so, I mean, so it doesn't, I mean, it. Lynn may have ended up having a little tweaking here, but essentially it was based on what I had ended up putting together. It doesn't mean that there's a default that, oh, we don't have it done by this time. That automatically means that we have to go out to rebid. It contains no such language, and that's not an implication of it. But you are correct, Council Chair, yeah, we can. that you could. Right. That, that's up to you as a body, but at this point. I mean, my advice would be let us continue to end sure. up negotiating because there were some big issues that we would have regardless. This issue with the pumps is a really big issue, and we need to see what we can do. If we don't get it, we don't, if we're not able to get an agreement together, then obviously we deal with it at that point. But we're going to be having to redo everything uh, and, and cover the same ground potentially with anyone else who might be uh, considered. So I can speak on my behalf. I stand by my vote, and I'm comfortable in my vote. Um, if I felt that in this particular case, this contract not coming forward because of uh, ESA brothers, for example, being unreasonable in their negotiations or putting on conditions that are unreasonable, that I'd be the first one that would carry the biggest flag and say, let's put this back out for bids. I'm sorry, just like a normal negotiation in my business. You're out of negotiations. I'm going to go back out to somebody else. But in this particular case, what was found out based on multiple sources, once the golf course was walked into, and again, I'm using the words changes. You know what? I'm going to say it. Lots of stuff happened by the former person that was there 
And because of that, that's a game changer in any type of contract negotiations. So at that particular point, some additional things have to be T's crossed and I's dotted before we can come to a conclusion on a final formal contract. Now, if I felt it was administration, this is the opposite people negotiating, was being unreasonable or what have you, then obviously I would be the first one to put the pressure on administration and say, hey, get your crap together. This thing's got to get be put together. The, the gentlemen or gentlemen are waiting for you to finish your contract. Let's get this thing done, or in this case, you. Let's go ahead and get this thing done so they can get it signed. They're ready to sign. But the issue is the stuff that was found that was after the fact and after the date of March 23rd, 2022, at which point we all voted on it. And again, reading it again, that does not make the contract void, but it makes it voidable if we chose to. Well, and we don't have a contract, <coughs> but we have a No, I'm sorry, not a contract. I'm sorry, a resolution. Right. Thank you. So, I mean, so it is something that still your honorable body could, could do something with, but again, my advice, and I would assume that the advice of, of, of the mayor in this situation would be that that would be premature, uh, particularly because, again, these issues would have been issues no matter what we were dealing with. I mean, equipment all being gone, um, pumps not working, maintenance being horrible, uh, a lot of very serious problems, and I'm just being as objective as possible without assigning any sort of blame in this particular situation with respect to saying it that way. Um, so, you know, again, okay. I think. I Thank so, you, Councillor. So are we well, any me, close? Me, are I just want to make closer? sure Vince is done. I want to make sure that Tom wants those done. Are Carter. we any closer to getting this thing signed or, or besides the pumps? I mean, you can go out and rent pumps just like generators. Yeah. No, these are I, I understand these pumps. are big industrial yeah. pumps, yeah. but there's yeah. that's, inco that's incorrect. I, I mean, I see those pumps. These are vertical yeah. shaft pumps. Okay. I understand. That. Guys, guys, <laughs> let's let's talk one at a time, yeah, or go so through the council so chair because so we're much. everybody's talking. Are we all set, Vince? I am now. Okay. Thank you. Any council member want to answer? Them? Council chair. Councilman, go ahead. Okay. Now, um, yeah, I, I mean, I voted yes on that the motion. <clears throat> But, you know, Mr. Miyake being the attorney, when he, problems arise, you would, well, the first thing you should do is, hey, we need an extension. I mean, that's what, that's, that's, I would, I would think that's common legal stuff when, when there's a motion made and stipulations in the motion, and you see that they're not going to be met, you should say, hey, we've got to have an extension. Okay, now that being said, I, that's, that's, what, that's one of the things that was brought to my attention. There was no extension requested, <clears throat> even though there are these problems. Now, inf information is being let out uh, selectively on the golf course. Now, a very high-ranking person at this table, a, a, a council person, I talked to them a few weeks ago, and they said that the previous concessionaire took all the golf carts with them. Well, yeah, and I said, no, he, he didn't. They, they were rented. So they, that person was under the impression, and given that, information from someone that this guy took all the golf carts with him and he didn't he rented them the guy the, the person that owned them came and got them now these pumps these are big pumps and the golf course floods a lot so we need these pumps right no you're, you're those Ray, wait a minute let me finish Ray let me finish let me finish let me finish let me finish right I mean does the you can most you guys agree you need pumps to pump off the water right that's the correct okay, statement. Ray, let me I'll finish, Ray. Let him finish. Go okay. ahead. But I'm just saying it's an incorrect listen, statement. Listen, listen. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> these, okay, these, 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 wait, wait. Just one second. Okay. I'm trying not to be rude to any council members, but everything has to go through the council chair. Otherwise, what's going to happen, we're going to be arguing, arguing like we're sitting at a bar having a few beers. We're going to get nowhere. So please, everyone, go through the council chair one at a time, and I'll allow each and every one of you guys to say whatever you want to say. Councilman, please go ahead. And Councilman, okay. you will have your... No. But now, these, these massive pumps, they're not there to pump the water off the golf course. These pumps are only there to irrigate the golf course. Correct. These are these big pumps everyone's talking about. 99% of the people in the, in the city think those pumps are made to pump off the golf course whenever it gets flooded. I don't think... No one ever said that, hey, these pumps are there to pump uh, the, the irrigate. Most people think they're to pump the water off. Now, the previous concessionaire 
he rented pumps to pump the water off. He owned one pump and he rented two to pump the water off the golf course. And he took those with him when he left. So there's, there's, there's information being let out selectively. Okay, what, one second. I'll Councilman, next. Councilman, were you next? Okay, go ahead. And, and, and I, Council Chair, I'm just going to throw out a couple of comments here. One, it seems like we are sitting in a bar and just constantly arguing amongst each other uh, without the alcohol. And number two, I just got one question, and maybe uh, our mayor or <laughs> Mr. Issa, quick question. Will the golf course be open this year? Can anybody answer that question for us? If not today, can you give me that answer by Tuesday? Can we just get that answer potentially by Tuesday? Will the golf course be open this year? And if it's not, guys, then, then it can't. It's not. Unfortunately, we lost it. It can't. We'll open this year. If it can open this year, great. If it can't, unfortunately, these are the circumstances. These are the cards that are dealt in front of us. I don't know why everybody's so afraid to either say yes or no. If the golf course could open, great. If the golf course can't, I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay. But I, I'm like, Thank I, you. I asked the question. Thank you, Carl. Yeah, that's why I'm going to give him a chance to answer, hands. answer your question. Go ahead. We're uncertain because of the condition of the of, of the property. Can we, can we get an we're under we are under the impression <laughs> that the that the banquet stuff could clearly be done. We are not necessarily certain with respect to the golf course this year. Okay, thank you. Are you all set? Okay. Next up, Mr. Muscat. Go ahead. I apologize to Councilman Wenzel, <laughs> but. Because I didn't know exactly where he was going, but I've heard so much rumors and innuendos. Okay, I can tell you from a maintenance standpoint, that golf course was never in the last five, six, seven, eight, nine years taken care of. Period. End of sentence. I've talked to a lot of golfers who went over to Inkster. The weeds that are growing out of the sand traps, the places run down. The golf course. They don't want to even golf there anymore, but their hands are kind of tied because it's the only one that's really local, okay? This golf course, I've got pictures, is a damn disaster, okay? The pump house. You might as well not even have a building there anymore, the holes that are in it, the vinyl siding that's ripped off of it, okay? And to see a, a, a three-foot square, 480-volt, three-phase electrical panel almost sitting in the Rouge River with rust holes the size of my fist in it that didn't occur just in six months or one year. That happened in the course of multiple years. That course was, it. he didn't do anything. And I'm going to stay it, and I don't care. Eric didn't do anything to that golf course. Anybody with any maintenance background with a half a brain will know that. Like I said before, I saw that oven that was in that kitchen. I can guarantee you a wet rag didn't hit that thing for years. That ought to be a shame, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm angry right now, very angry. Where was the Board of Health? Where was Wayne County Board of Health? Nowhere to be found, nowhere to be seen. And shame on us for not having our building engineering department or maintenance department go through that place. The blame goes everywhere, but to have a but, but to have a concierge, to have running a business, and in good faith, we put our good faith in these people that they would take care of their end of the bargain, and it wasn't. It wasn't, and I believe that's why the county wanted to get rid of it, and that's why the county's going to get rid of Inkster Valley. That's the bottom line, and anybody that doesn't want to believe that, you got your head in a hole. Thank you, Councilman. Any other members of the public? Go ahead. Name, city, street. Hassan Saab, John Daly, Dearborn Heights. I got a few questions. Go ahead. Number one, about the these, number one's out. You know, I've seen a, a couple of you guys walk the golf course. I just want to know when t Mr. Winslow, when was the last time he walked that golf course? When was the last time you walked last, it, sir? Last fall. Last fall? Okay. Have you been there recently? Because you're so passionate about doing things there and asking, but have you been there recently? Because I have, Vince has, council people has, mayor has. Have you been there recently? 
Not recently, no. But you're questioning and saying things when you have absolutely no objective like of being there. Like about what? you're questioning the pumps, questioning why it's not open, the, the condition, or anything. But you have not physically walked it as a council person. Does it matter if I walk there? Yes, it does matter. Right. I'm, a, I'm a resident and a citizen of the city, and I did walk when it. What are you so concerned about this golf course? Why am I so concerned? Yeah. Because it seems like some people have agendas on this because of this golf course. That's why I got you, so you concerned. Said that I had an agenda. I, I my, believe you, you do. Agenda I believe you do. do and we can discuss that? that later. We could. Because right now, I just don't want to open up things. I, I can sit with you and talk. I never, you know, but, I never but, met but, you before. I didn't know who you uh, were. No, I no, you, 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 no, you, you, you really don't have to know me. But like I said, we could sit and talk and we can discuss things. Yeah, let, let's keep this respectful. Well, I, 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 I went to the golf. But I'm just asking him, as our resident, when was the last time he's walked the golf course? I told you last fall, right before it closed. So, so you have so, not been in it recently. So, so why don't no, you take no, the time out of your day okay. and just walk? So, in, uh, okay. I, 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 so I know, what, but, what wait, happened over the winter that? Wait, so, council, I'm not council, a council, please. I'm not a golf expert oh, to tell you what happened over the winter, but How'd I walked walk through it. It's an absolutely, in my background of business, it's absolutely horrible. I'm saying, I walk, you asked me when I walked it. End of the season last year. Okay. Last week it was open. But you've so been hearing every single console so person, devastated. every single console person here has been saying how horrible of condition it is, but you have not taken five minutes of your time to ever walk it in, in the past month or since it's been put out for bid or the day it was put in for a oh, walkthrough. Yeah. You know, I did walk it last week. You did? Yeah. How'd you get it? Who gave you access to it? Why, is it locked? Yeah. yeah. Well, how are you supposed to get in? How'd you, you can get ask the administration. How'd you get in? I went in when he went in, everybody went in when there was a walkthrough. Agenda here, it sounds like to me. Yep. And then as for building on it, realistically going back in my engineering background, you know how much it would cost an infrastructure underground, just building ways and bridges to get back there to build anything? Have you guys ever thought of that? Like of who's gonna spend who's gonna spend thirty, forty million dollars underground to build a couple homes on it, luxury homes? Who would do that? I got a question for you. Yes, sir. What, what do you got against me? I have absolutely nothing against you. Oh, yeah. Nothing. I mean, a matter of fact, Mr. Winslow, and I don't want to put this on the record right now. We can talk outside because, like, again, I'm not here to bash you. And I'm not here. I'm, I mean, this has nothing to do with your personal life. But we can talk outside after this council meeting, and I'll tell you who I am. Okay. Well, Thank you. Thank you. Any other resident have any comments? I'm sorry, we have somebody. Okay, no problem. I'm, I'm sorry, ahead. real quick. Um, Rachel LaPointe for uh, Merrick Street, Good Dearborn Heights. Heights. Um, I just have a comment. I do not need a response. I'm putting my mom hat on right now. I am deeply disappointed in all of you. You should all be ashamed of yourselves because you cannot act like adults. And there are people in this room that are bullying people and as Councilman Wenzel said, belittling them and treating them terribly. And you know who you are. Tell They're us who we are. The mayor and his staff. And they are not only belittling and bullying you guys, but residents. I'm not going to speak about all the things right now, but you all need to act like adults. And I, I can't believe that you all are behaving like this. Like, I just can't. <sighs> Act like adults. Thank you. Thank you. On Zoom, somebody mentioned there was somebody on Zoom? IPhone. I'm sorry? The reaction. Reaction? reaction. Okay. Okay, no problem. Anybody else here? That's a, that's a raise of hand, ain't it? That is a hand. Where? Where? On an iPhone. Look on this one. It's iPhone. Has iPhone has a hand. That's a wave. That's the mouse. That's the mouse. Yeah, see, look here. If you look here, see, that's the mouse. It's the mouse, guys. It's just right. the mouse. See the mouse? Can you move the mouse? Okay. Seeing nobody else here in public? All right. Move to, well, you don't need to vote, but just, yeah, meeting is ended. Thank you.